The sample comprehensive PC game covers every network feature you will likely need for a peer-to-peer -peer game, especially for a self-published PC game. Specifically, creating, joining, and leaving player-created teams, object replication and serialization, uploading player-created game sessions to a server, network address traversal to go through routers, remote procedure calls, ready state in the lobby, host determination, migration, and atomic session joins. I start one instance of the sample. I connect to the test server. It determines what type of router I have. It found that I had a moderate router. It executed UPnP to open the router. And then it's downloading rooms from the server. Since there's no rooms presently, I create a room. I start another instance. It goes through the same process again of determining what type of router I have. And it found the room that I created. I joined the room. Here are quite a few things happened. First, it did not punch to the host. Since the host happens to be on the same computer, it connected directly. Once two systems are connected, Fully Connected Mesh 2 can determine who's the host of the session. In general, it uses whichever system has been running multiplayer the longest, which is the first instance. You can see that on the first instance, it says I have become host for the first time. On the second instance, it told me who the host was. It downloaded the state from the first system, the game class, two teams that were created when the room was created, and the user that the remote system created. The user that my second instance created was likewise sent to the first instance. On each system, I can join teams. This is using the team manager class. I can ready or unready to play the game. When all systems are ready, the host can begin gameplay. I use RPC4 to send chat messages. I start a third instance now. As before, I connect to the server. Now when I join the room, it first does NAT punch through to the host, connects to the host, downloads from the host the list of fully connected mesh to participants, connects to each of them, sends the results to the host, and then the host will either accept or deny the session join. This results in atomic session joins and avoids the problem where you may connect to some users in the session and not other users. You can see that the third instance downloaded the game, two teams, and two users from the remote systems. When the host of the original system exits the room, the second system now becomes host. The third system is notified of who the new host is. I can lock the game on the second instance, attempt to rejoin on the first instance. It connected, downloaded that the game was locked, and refused to join. Now I unlock the session on the second instance, rejoin from the first instance. Now the first instance re-downloaded the game state information from the second instance, who is the new host. That covers most all of the heavy networking that's involved in writing a peer-to-peer -peer game, especially on the PC, where the primary difficulty is in NAT traversal, UPnP, NAT type detection, and atomic session joins. Thank you.